Hey guys, what's up? This is Tessa Jeffers for PremierGuitar.com. I am on the stage at Ascend Amphitheater in Nashville, Tennessee before the ZZ Top Show tonight with Billy Gibbons and Dusty Hill's guitar and bass tech, Elwood Francis. How are you doing? Hey, pretty good. Um, he's handling all the gear this tour right now, so he's going to take th us through both Billy and Dusty's gear. So I think we're going to start with Dusty, yes, Dusty's yeah, yeah, bass Yes, we'll start with Dusty's bass All right, room. so we're going to start with amps? Yeah, which it's all, this is, this is whole thing is Dusty's rigs the main and the spare it's really simple just wireless into an amp splitter into a bunch of amps <laughs> and a di he uses the jmp ones and the marshall valve state what are these the 8080s i think um almost the same thing billy uses he just uses one dirty channel mm -hmm. um and, and he's been using those for a while now, right? Yes, they both pretty much use the same thing. Right. They don't have the same settings, but you would think so sometimes. If we, When I check Dusty's bass, I mean, people look around like, man, what's going wrong? Because <laughs> it's really, really big and distorted and everything. Nice. And, um, so it's really just a splitter. He's got, he just does one channel. The other two are spares. So his signal goes from um, the bass into the splitter, into the Marshall, into a direct box, and into, this is an octave down, and this is a filter that takes everything from the low B down. So it, what's that, the micro thumpinator? Uh, yeah, what is this one called? Micro thumpinator. It's just cool. it just I don't think I've ever seen that before. It filters off everything below B flat. Because we want the octave we want the octave down effect on every note except B flat and lower. Okay. So that's what that does. And that goes to an octave box. So it's three channels. Just clean clean DI, the octave DI, and dirty. a dirty amp. And the amp goes to an ISO cabinet and it's mic'd in there. Same mics it. that they've been using Same since mics. last time? Same mics. They want, you know, I can't, Dusty, I think, has a Sennheiser. I don't know. Okay. It's a sound guy question. But I know Billy's are the same mics. The uh, Heil, the 70s. Um, <laughs> Dusty's faces. That's uh, beautiful. Is it heavy? No, they're pretty light. Every, all the guitars are really, really Especially light. Especially for a bass. Yes. And it's so got tell a really us big about neck. this. Okay, this is John Bolin made. Just the Bo Diddley model uh, with fur. The TV Jones pickup. And all Dusty's basses have the Babbitt's bridge. Nice. And, you know, just basic fuzz model so now, bass. Do you comb these for them? I do comb. <laughs> this is the comb that does it. It gets rid of fleas. They too. look very pretty. So tell us a little bit about the the wireless are housed in these tobacco tins. The tobacco cans? Did you go find those? I, you know, yes, I did find those. I got the idea to do that a long time ago and just went and found them and just started doing it. And now that it's very cool. once I started doing it, people started giving them to me. And I'll never have to look for them again. I've got them got coming collection. out my ears. Yeah, I mean, I've got them back at... At the ZZ warehouse, I've got boxes. Of you got them, favorites got that you, you like the Prince Alberts? No, actually, you know, the uh, this one's, it's weird you should say that. Tuxedo, Tuxedo? would be my favorite yeah, and, and cool. half and half. Well, the thing about it is I use the same ones over because they have to have holes drilled in the bottom. So after all these years, it's still the same ones. Oh, really? And I've got all these other ones that I never use. That's fantastic. Because you can only use so many anyway. So do they use the same type of wireless systems, Dusty N? Uh, oh, like they both use the Shure uh, UR4Ds. Okay. Billy used to use the Samson. I just switched to these this year. Dusty had been using them. They're they're different. They um, they're a little bit noisy. I'm still still dialing them in. Okay. They're but they're really consistent. The the tins don't affect anything. Well, I line the inside of them with, uh, I used to go as far as have like a foam insert thinking it made a difference and I realized it didn't. So now I just line them with uh, 
cloth gaff tape so it's not metal clanging because they're really they're really sturdy in there yeah. they just slip in there it's like they were made for them so i really cool. lucked out all right what's this beautiful red base the here? beautiful red base which has a matching guitar we'll get to is the same thing under that's a babbitt's bridge all dusty's bases at this point are the old uh, 50s slab body style precision fender bases with the single pickup and all of them obviously except for the fur will have the stacked Seymour Duncan um, precision reissue you know pickup they're pretty much all the same they may look a little different so what about this finish okay this finish is actually pretty cool it's it's a sticker can I touch it yeah, she can touch it. <laughs> you can take, you never knife, know. You can take a knife Sorry. and gouge your names in it if you want to. Um, this, so it's a sticker. It's a sticker, but you know, it's really cool because on eBay, I found a 56 precision base that had been in a flood. And an this, actual flood? Or just a flood? Uh, you know, it wasn't a natural flood. It was just a couple years ago. And I found it on eBay. I got some high-definition pictures of it. Or I didn't. Someone did. I sent Billy the link, knowing he would dig it. He got high-definition pictures of it. And they just <laughs> printed so them out. So that was what the damage kind of looked like? This is what the base looked like. Wow. I mean, That's it's really cool. if you get close to it, you can tell it's a man. What the fuck is that? But if you stand away from it, that really is how the base looked. It's pretty so cool. So do they call it... You know, they've got style. They call their guitars different things. Are they calling this new you know, motif anything? This has been called the peeler. The peeler? <laughs> the peelers, cool. because of paint peeling. You what know, about the fretboard? That's all still photo. That's the same thing. Wow. It's cool. still, st I think even the headstock, it's not just a sticker there. The whole thing is, you know, it's pretty amazing. It's photographs and stickers. But it's chambered body. It's so did light. you say Bolin helped do that, or was that? Bolin, this okay. is a Bolin guitar. Okay. So are they, is Dusty using, and Dusty and Billy using these peelers a lot during the sets? They, these are the, the peelers are the main guitars up until, then until they get to fur. So okay. the main guitar. Legs or? To legs, yeah. Cool. I, call, I call that right song the fur the song. <laughs> yeah, they, he's, all, they're only playing like one guitar the whole night and then the furs so the peelers are like the number peelers one. are the number one cool. guitar and that kind of replaced the bull and made the purple ones there the purple ones and there was something in between the purples or at least one there was the gold tops in between them and there's somewhere you know because we have two sets of gears i think the gold tops are still with the other set of gear because we sent to this is the u.s gear and then we have the worldwide gear to save on shipping nice. so and so will those uh, well, A and B rigs have like the same types of uh, models or will they be totally no, different? No, the only thing that will be the same will be the two first. Okay, cool. And everything will be, I mean, all this stuff will be the same. So, oh, so in the Europe uh, rig, or did you say? European rig or the, the B rig, whatever. The B rig would be the gold top still. Yes, that's cool. where the, yeah, that's where the gold tops are. So I saw a base right here that has a really cool paint job. Yep. Can you tell us about that? This is uh, the Freddie King base, which I and painted this. So I, you painted this, right? I painted this. That yeah. is beautiful. And this, once again, we, you know, we like things. How'd you that, get the idea to do that? You know, it's, it's the way I paint things. I've been doing this, this whole peeling paint thing. We've mm -hmm. been doing that for a while. I do it like this. But I usually don't do things for ZZ Top because Billy's hard to deal with and enough. I have to deal <laughs> with him enough. He's like Bill Monroe sometimes. But you've been together 20 years, so. Yeah, and that's why, so why I avoid him <laughs> sometimes. No, I don't avoid him. It's just Billy has really specific needs. I just want to paint guitars. Right. I don't want to build guitars. I want to paint guitars. Cool. So this is your first kind of custom paint job for, for ZZ Top? Well, I did some back throughout the years. I've done it here and there. But so I, breaking it out? What's that? Is uh, Dusty breaking this? Yes, he is. I did this, actually, I was going to say, I did this for a gift. I didn't ever expect him to oh, play man. it. And he wanted to get... Yeah, these are out of, like, you know, a camper. Did you find these guards, too? Uh, this is my... My daughter gave me some rusted metal 
because my kids find rusted metal and they keep it for me and I made patterned it after that rusted metal. That's really metal. cool. So what about uh, strings for Dusty? Dusty uses what? The GHS... What is, oh, what's that going on? <laughs> what's what? Oh, he's just got the dollar bills. That's fun. Yeah, with the, uh, the customs. Are they two dollar bills? They are two dollar bills. Nice. The, uh, the customs took our bullets. Now we have to get some Hollywood bullets. They took <laughs> our bullets, so we put two dollar bills there. Yeah, these, these two bases, it's once again... This is Dusty's, just a stock, Dusty's uh, model precision. I, I put the Babbitt's bridge on it, but it's, mm -hmm. it's stock. This one's the same thing. Just stock fender, Dusty models. Okay. And that's got us for the bases. All right, well, I guess we'll go on to Billy's guitars. <laughs> okay, Billy's guitars. This is, you know, a, a few years ago, he started playing this S, well, they, it's, a, Technically, it's the 61 reissue Les Paul SG with the sideways trim. Wow, that's cool. Now, I've, I, can't, I can't show you how it works because I've disconnected it and made it to where it doesn't work. But um, So it's not functional now? No, it's not functional okay. because it really it's, it makes the guitar go out of tune so bad. It really just didn't work at all. And so I've... But in theory... In theory, what you did was you pulled it like that. It went up and down. Crazy. And that pulled it back, but you know, I've got it tightened right. off. I've, I've taken things, I've taken it apart and put it back together and modified it. Cause it's a tuning nightmare otherwise. But it does, this big old clunk of metal does add something to the sound. What would you describe that timber? You know. Mojo? Yeah, you know, all <laughs> guitars, they can be exactly identical, and one will have it and one don't. It's just... And I Billy's on the quest that for that is. one. Yeah, you know, and these, these add something, you know, I don't know what it is. I'll tell you one thing, he wears his rock jewelry, and this is the encore guitar. So he okay. uses the red peeler, and this is the encore guitar. Uh, his rock jewelry, when he hits this, it... Gosh, man, it's clang, clang, clang. It's the loudest, noisiest. Everyone complains about it. I've had to put like foam under this whole thing. I've gone to great lengths to try to get rid of the clang. What are the pickups? Pickup in this. What is the pickup in this? A Sumer Duncan Pearly Gates in this one. Pearly that Gates. one's the stock pickup, but it's disconnected. It's. He uses bridge only. Yeah, on this guitar, it's just wired straight to the um, volume pot and out. And I moved the volume pot to the pickup selector and took all that stuff out Great. just because it was in the way. So, uh, seven gauge strings? Seven, seven, nine, eleven, twenty, thirty, thirty-eight. But he does have a, a guitar he tunes different. Open tuning? Uh, for um, just got page open E. Which guitar is he using for that? Right? We're not. We're not using. Oh. We're not doing that song. I've okay. got. I've got another locker of um, guitars in the truck in case if they do. Just got paid. I've got a Les Paul out there and everything. Okay. Um, Down the line. Down the line. Melody Maker, built by John Ball and Saul Chambered, has a Seymour Duncan Hot Rails pickup under that cover. Is this? The one that's fashioned after the first guitar yes. that Billy ever yes, got it is. when he was 13 or something? Yes. Okay, This cool. is a copy of that. I don't think I've ever seen this. You know, this is here. He Every once in a while, he'll play it. I keep this one ever since he got it. I fell in love with it, so I've kept it out on the road. Because every once in a while, he'll say, why did we got weird? And I'll give him that guitar. <laughs> He's going, yeah, this is great. Sometimes he just wants to get weird. Yeah. yeah. Certain songs? You think? Or <laughs> <laughs> All the time? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't happen often, but he does. Charles Whitfield, Telecaster. This is a chambered chambered body. I don't think it has a chambered neck. This is Charles Whitfield's pickup. He doesn't make the pickup, but I cannot remember who makes his pickup for him. In the Babbitt's Bridge, the other pickup, which you can't see, no, just gonna... there's the pole piece right there. And this is the volume for that pickup, and this is the volume for that. Does he use it? He can. But he doesn't. 
he probably would live you know um, he probably would in the studio live is just straight ahead in the studio is when he you know explores more and what's the the beer just so he can flip it over and let people know he likes beer did he make that or did you I have to do that <laughs> you know so I say have to um, yeah because every time we go to Europe each country we go to I have to put it in their language really sort of <laughs> you have to put beer in their language yeah. <laughs> so you know how to say beer in a lot of languages huh yeah no because I have no memory but I could uh, Poland, this is the other peeler. Once again, the same, the same sticker. If you'll notice, it's like, oh, uh, you can't see, I've got the beer. I can hold it if you want. They're the same. They are the same. You know. And it was a base, so it fits, it fits that better. Are the backs the same? Yes, but you can't tell because of my beer sign. Uh, same thing for Billy, chambered. This one does have the chambered neck. And the pickup? Pickup is a cream, cream tea, tea banger and mash. Nice. This is, I think, the Keith Richards and Billy pickup. Right. And so oh. he's using the cream tea, he's using that guitar most of the time until yes. legs and the encore. Yes. And, gotcha. if, and if the uh, the Whitfield is the spare for that. The, the Whitfield's new for this tour, though. Uh, right? He just got that a week ago. Oh, he was, really? He was playing it, and then he stopped, and I don't know why. The uh, the jumbo and Bo Diddley Gretsch, just a basic jumbo and guitar, chambered. I think this one was one of the first with the chambered necks. So once again, it's really sort of light. It is. You know, they're really light. The lightest. This thing is amazingly light. And by the, the way, the melody maker is light. The melody maker is like, oh my gosh, it's almost going to float away. And That's you know, like his. That's what Billy likes is the lightest yes. guitar. Didn't he like fill some guitar with oh, the helium? Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> the inner Let's tube with the helium. It. Well, the idea was there was an inner tube inside the guitar that you could fill with helium, so you could walk <laughs> beside it, you know, and guide it down. I don't know if it worked. You know. I've never seen it. I don't. That could be a legend, you know. I don't want to blow Another it for anybody. Another thing that you said you've never seen was the peso. Well, no, yeah, no, that's, I've never seen him use one live. I've got tons of peso picks. Do you ever just say, Billy, play it with the, play well, you the know, pe peso? You know, because I came in, I've been here 19 years, like 20 years, next year, something like that. And that's like, there, no, there's 20 years before I was here. So there's all this stuff that goes on that I have no idea about, right. you know. And, and people really like want to know a lot about that stuff. And I'm like, man, I don't really know. You can ask Billy and... Depending on the yes, day. Yeah, I mean, you're going to get a colorful answer. So, you know, so I don't know. There's a lot mm -hmm. lost, I guess. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think it's fun. I think people like it. Yeah, it should be. That's the way, man, I used to love that stuff. Like what, you know, Eddie Van Halen with the Variac, you know, right. that, that was cool. Okay, Owen, could you walk us through Billy's signal chain for this tour? Okay, it's from the wireless into... Um, this is the a, the main and the spare rig. That's why they're identical. So this pretty much, they're both the same. So I'll just deal with this. Okay. Um, it goes from the wireless into the uh, RJM effects gizmo, which is just, uh, it gives me five stop box effects. And you are turning these on and off, Yeah, right? I turn them off because it's easy top. There's not a lot, you know, there's... And you do it for both Dusty and Billy? Dusty doesn't have... Dust, Dusty, you turn him the, on and he's got hand him a bass, and he's gone. Okay. That's you never. All that that stuff stays on all the time. Okay. Okay. So his his effects: the bass octave deluxe, the carbon copy for a slap, and the Jimi Hendrix Octavia Octavio. That's what it is. But this also runs to the EQ because it's really high endy. Okay. So that's on one thing, um, on one channel. And what's this one? This, this is the tuners. These tuners oh, are just tuner. for me because gotcha. I sit here in tune and it's easy just to look down. So, Speaking of Jimi Hendrix, uh, I read that he gave Billy a pink Strat back in like 68. Yeah. Have you ever seen it? I have seen that guitar. Cool. As a matter of fact. Is it like what kind of pink? What, it's, at this point, it's, uh, 
it's like faded to like a so it looks almost tan do you it's, know right so that just stays at home does that right, stay in it's houston in, that's something you know i i saw it a long time ago he's got you know i only take care of a small part of his world the live world mm -hmm. so at, at the zz warehouse you know we have a guitar lockup but it's just show guitars there's not really vintage guitars in there so right so the show guitars how many would be there oh gosh i mean hundreds you know hundreds i think last time there. you said it was like 12 years or 14 years ago there were yes. 450 yeah, right. so now there's probably yeah and since then you know now i think dusty moved to nashville it's i think like he took or yeah they just keep piling up they keep piling up you know and so so like i could say i don't my little world i know about what does billy's got a great big world going on i just know that little piece um where were we i'm sorry about that yeah we were just talking about the, the peters effects. the peterson for me okay so it goes from the uh the wireless to the effects gizmo to an amp splitter okay um this spare <laughs> It's, we got lots of spares. Right. Everywhere you, anything you see that's not turned on is a spare. Do you ever have to use them? You no, know, I think I think I've had to use this rig once. On Dusty's, I've never had to. Yeah, and I probably will tonight. Now yeah. that I'm talking about it, but, but no, it looks normally. like a few different things on this uh, these pedals. There is, but they're the same thing. Okay, gotcha. Because There's you know, Jimmy. I put this stuff. Yeah, this is. See, this Jimmy has the LED. This one doesn't. Okay. That's why if I ever had to go to this, I need the LED because I have to check this every day. Check me out because <laughs> you never it's know special. if it's right. So, you know, but they do the same thing. It's just, you know, I change things up because guitar players do that. You know, when I put this together and I know what he needs right. and he knows I'm not going to fuck him over. So I'll just do some, I'll just do what I feel needs to be done to help everyone be happy. So that's, they're the same things. This, this is a uh, Ranger FX El Distorto. This just goes to, I've got this car Raleigh amp that takes one of the outs, one of the uh, amp splitters. Mm -hmm. So I can monitor Billy's guitar at all the time. So I've got this going on simply because I like to have fun. So I'll make it, I'll do, I'll use some really weird distortions and bit crushers. So just, that's what you're hearing. Sometimes, you know, I mean, if I'm feeling good, I'll make sure everything's going right. I'm not over here just partying, but if it's, if it, if, but if it is going right, I'll start messing with it just fun. for fun. You know, and then I mean? the orange is for Dusty. And the orange is the same thing. It's Dusty straight out. So, so I know what's, and that's pretty much coming right off the wireless. So, I know the bass is working. I don't know the amps are working, but I know the bass is working, <laughs> which would help later. Um. So the uh, the amp splitters, uh, we have two ISO boxes. One of them is miking the Marshall through the uh, Marshall valve state, the Marshall JMP1 through the Marshall valve state. One amp drives the uh, ISO box, which is miked. The other amp drives the two stage cabinets. And those and are? Uh, so the magnetones the loaded magnetons. with some we custom made eminence speakers. Eminence. They do some weird. I don't know, we've been experimenting. They do different baskets and different magnets for it. At this point, I don't know what they're doing. I just plug them in and tell them whether we like them or not. <laughs> so it's the Marshall is one side. It's a dual amp. It's a dual amp setup. The Marshall on one side and the other side's the magnetone. Now the magnetone goes straight to the ISO box. It doesn't go out. Billy doesn't hear that. Okay. Um, and it goes straight out front. Now there is this one that's set to a clean, to a DI just for recording purposes. If they record every nine, if they want to reamp later. So oh, that's cool. what that is. And you know, he homogenizes everything with the EQ, which you know, we went through to the last rig rundown. I don't want to go through that again. <laughs> Y'all can just look at that. And the reason he does that, though, because people are confused, the reason he does that is because on stage, it's a comfort zone. Right. You know, and it's, he wants it homogenous. Because I know people ask me all the time, well, if he wants everything to sound like a Les Paul, why doesn't he play in Les Paul? 
Well, you know, because guitar players want to change things Style. up. We all want to change things up. But Plus, it's probably fun to try to play something and make it sound the same. Yes, I mean, and it, it is sort of fun making it jump through hoops sometimes. I mean, it pulls, I pull my hair out sometimes, but, you know, but trying to get a him. Telecaster, yeah, it's got to be fun for him. <laughs> To get a Telecaster to sound like a Les Paul or to try to get it to is amusing and fun. Um, but you know, it's all the comfort zone. If he so gets it in there. I didn't see the Pearly Gates model here, right? Yeah. It's, it's not, there's not a Les Paul Pearly Gates. Is, or is it I've got one here? in the truck. Okay. So I do, do have you one in the still truck. use that as your benchmark? Uh, well, I've got it. It's marked in. I don't need it. Okay. Because gotcha. that's what it is. That's the G chord. So it's all built off oh, a G so you chord. Just try to EQ so it I, to that. I match it gotcha. to that. And Duh. that puts him in the comfort zone. The guitar is going to react the way he wants it to react. They don't keep a, lo a loud stage volume. I mean, we can have this conversation. So that's so there's more gain and there's not a lot of high end and he can get the guitar to sing. You know, he doesn't use in-ear monitors. He goes by the PA and we have one wedge on each far corner and that's it. So he's out there listening to the PA mostly. Oh. It's really, it's really old school weird thing to do that not many people do these days. Most people yeah, they usually have like in ears. Yeah, everyone. I think you know Dusty does have in ears. Frank has in ears, but Billy's old school baby. Cool. Uh, so, did we want to say anything about the Magnetone uh, the Magne Super Fifty Nine? This Magnetone Super Fifty Nine. We've been using that for quite a few years now. Um, it used to be a prototype, but it used to they be a prototype. Now they've started making them, uh, and it's it's you know I don't I don't want to sell anyone short, but to just cut to the chase, it's like a really souped up Marshall, you know, and this big tone it's a Spanish amplifier that he bought some in Europe on the European tour, because he does try new things constantly. Yeah. So what's going on with the big tone? Uh, Is he using it? We, we use it sometimes. You know, it's it's in the same ballpark. They're not the same, and I don't want to sell anyone short or anything because they both sound really good and, you know, so... Yeah, he likes to play around, so... Yeah, so it's just, it is what it is. It's a big, so beefy big, Marshall. Big Tone, he got it in Spain? It's He got it in Spain, and it's 100% it's a Spanish amp. The oh, Spaniards made the cool. amp, finally. The Spaniards nice. came through. You mentioned the LED, so the LEDs on the guitars, right? Don't they light up sometimes or not? Uh, on the purple ones, they the did. Th okay, I thought they did. Wait, so you would be turning that on or they would? Well, no, wait, I had to turn it on at the beginning of the night. It was the pickup, the pole pieces were LEDs. Okay. Or not the, it looked like the pole piece or LEDs. They were just LEDs instead of pole pieces. No, I would turn that on at the beginning of the so night. So they're not lighting, them, lighting anything? No, no more purple guitars. I did not like the purple guitars. I'm glad the purple guitars are gone. LEDs Do you want all. to say that on camera? <laughs> yeah, I don't care. I've, I've talked to both of them about it. I'm going, we went too far. I took too much wood out. I didn't. They looked great. They're killer. Because, you know, a lot of it's a bit of experiment with Billy, too. I mean, we, we, both of us, I mean, he'll take ideas from anybody. You know, it's like once you're in, you're in. You know, uh, Dusty's old tech, TJ, he came up with this design, a color for Dusty's bass that, you know, that Billy really dug and had a bunch of guitars made from TJ's color. So, you know, it's... It must be fun to have that, like, kind of artistic it's, it's thing great. going on all the time. It's great. Hey, Billy, I thought of this. Oh, that's a killer idea. Let's, nice. Let's well, get some Well, so you got your made. Freddie King bass. Are you working on any other Well, now I jobs? think Well, I think I have to do some more King. I have to do... A guitar, maybe? I have to do, I think I gotta do they got a some match. more, yes. I gotta do some more Kings. Do a couple more Freddie King basses and maybe a couple BB um, King guitars. Oh, nice. Or Jerry well, King it wasn't BB the one that inspired Billy right. to play the to Light play of the Gage. Light Street. But BB didn't play Sevens, did he? I don't know, you know. <laughs> it's folklore. I don't want to start okay. uh, dispelling the myths. No, I don't, no, I honestly, I don't know. Cool. You know, but you know, I've handled Jimmy Page's guitars. I worked with the uh, Aerosmith, and Jimmy Page came and set set in, and he used eights. Yeah. You know, and at the same time, Joe Perry was There's using eights. There's somebody else using a really light gauge. I can't think of right now. Yeah, so it's like you know, it's. A lot of people do, but I've just never heard the sevens. So I'd never heard of sevens either, and you know, I used to. 
I used to buck it too. I'll admit it. I used to be like, man, if he would just use some heavier strings. But you know, I'll, I have some of the same guitars he has. He'll, if I come up with an idea, he has the guitars made. He'll have me one made. Oh, so cool. I'll have the same thing, and I'll put 11s on it. You know, and you can really hear so a difference acoustically. No, no, oh. I'm, I'm a punk rocker. He's, he's Billy. He's into his other thing his Cuban thing or whatever. So, anyway. So when you go, you'll go on the, the solo tour with Billy. Yes. Will yes. he take a whole different yeah, we're, set of we're, guitars? We're, yes, who's got some Cuban guitars Are you made. still deciding? Or? No, I think they're already made, they're John Boland's. Uh, Anything you can tell us? I think they're maybe, uh, it may be cigar oriented. Maybe, oh, cool. it's, you know, I can't, okay. I've not seen them. I, some cigar box? You know, oh, we didn't no, talk about... I think this a uh, Cuban cigar wrapper oh. or something. Maybe like a like cigar, a, a, a tobacco wrapped guitar, knowing him, cool. who knows. I like it. Um, but yeah, but that's going to be, that'll be different. It'll be all different gear. He won't use this stuff. He'll just plug straight in through a magnetone. And it, we didn't talk about Billy's slides. Do you still use the same? His still signature? use the same. The uh, Yeah, the Dunlop slide. Nice. And is he still using his orange Billy Still Gibbons uses picks? the orange picks. What uh, gauge are those? Oh, those are a little bit I different. I think like are 151. Are they different? Maybe they just look different when I s in the picture. Well, he went from, uh, you know, even before these, the other ones looked exactly like him. Um, that's a little cartoon I drew of him. Before that, it was just his signature, so. Do you have that on any guitars? No, do not. <laughs> Cool. Well, thank you so much, Elwood, for talking to us. It's You're hot welcome. out here, I know. I know, it's killer, man. Well, have a great show tonight. Okay, thank y'all. This is Tessa Jeffers for PremierGuitar.com. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.